Friends, today's podcast is on the topic, the government and the economy. We tend to closely associate the performance of the economy with the government. So when the economy does well, the government takes all the credit and when the economy does not do well, the government shall bear the brunt of the blame. Whether it's blame or credit, one thing that we need to clearly understand is that the government probably gets more than its fair share of both. And factors quite beyond the government often contribute more to economic performance. Let us go back to the various phases when the economy did exceptionally well. No matter who was in power, whether it was a government with an absolute majority or a government in which the left had disproportionate political influence and policy controls or whether it was a coalition which was instable. In each of these cases, we have had surprise economic performance as well as disappointments. We have also had disappointments where very clear majority governments with lot of political capital did not fare well on the economic front. Talking about governments with a significant majority with no political challenge, not being able to get the full power out of the economy, we have three consecutive governments kind of in that spot. And we have coalitions which have done relatively better. Effectively, the reason why I say government is given more than fair share of credit or blame is that the economy tends to perform well when there is a favorable global environment. When global trade is better, we have better export growth. And that gives a lot of traction for an economy like ours. More people tend to get employed in export facing industries than in domestic consumption driven industries. Most of the consumption driven industries are not really the kind of employment generators as export facing industries. Naturally, export facing industries have a better potential to be stronger growth drivers than inward facing industries. And for export driven global facing industries to do well, you need strong global trade and you need better economic performance in the western economy. But what has happened in the recent years is all these tried, tested or established ideas have got disrupted and the reason for that is the kind of politics that is emerging in the developed world. As more and more right of centre political parties or clear right wing parties gain power. We are seeing that the first casualty to that political assertion is the threat that global trade faces. So it's immediately visible in the fortunes of the exporting nations. You are seeing that in China and the ripple effect has also been there in India. Many people compare our performance with some other neighboring countries like a Bangladesh which is good in one industry. And for that industry not to do well in India, there are other reasons also. But principally, when the West closes its doors 
or buys less or it refuses to trade more with the developing world. When exports become difficult or more competitive, we have not done well. And it is in that situation that we presently find ourselves in. So if the economy has to come back, we need a very strong revival in export. We need global trade to come back, which means that we need to somehow forge better trade relations with our countries which import from us. And that is where I believe that the efforts of the Indian government over the past several years will definitely help as trade becomes more and more difficult and choppy. We are going to see that Indian exports will once again gradually recover and prosper. So that is principally how the government can improve the economic performance of the country. The second is in investments. Here, I would think that more than the government, it's the corporate India which is not in a position to deliver. Corporate India has clearly failed the country. The reasons are simple that they created a balance sheet problem before 2008 and 10 years later, most large Indian corporate groups do not have the kind of balance sheet which enables them to make big investment decisions. Which means, if we talk about big ticket investments, we need to look beyond the top Indian corporations and expect global capital to come in and take vantage projects in our country. Now, this again is something that has to gather very quick momentum because the government also is now coming in as a seller of businesses. So you're going to have two sets of sellers of Indian businesses, the large Indian corporate groups on one hand, the banks who have ta taken uh, many of these companies to the NCLT uh, for failure to pay their dues, and you have government which is going to sell uh, some of its uh, crown jewels. So all these three capital hungry parts have to be fed with global capital. And that is again one of the ways in which we can bring our economy back onto the growth path. Because once this money comes in and a lot of enterprises get bought, the capital that is freed can once again invest in. Once this money comes in to buy those assets which are on sale, the capital that is freed can once again get invested into newer businesses or into creating fresh capacities in these very businesses and government will be able to spend whatever money it gets in infrastructure and in continuing to be the primary driver of asset creation. So we are looking at multiple factors which need to kick in very fast to help the government show economic performance. So essentially the government has several levers but cannot be the sole driver of the economy and that is something that has been proved in the last two years. So you need the global capital, you need players who are hungry to be present in India and willing to write fat checks to buy Indian businesses and quickly settle themselves in. The IBC cases and the NCLT cases of recent years prove that there is a lot of global capital that is more than willing to get into India and buy businesses which take a long time to create. Essentially, that is a good news for us and that is good news for the government also and that is the only hope for the economy. Let us hope that in the coming year, the government is able to mobilize public opinion, global investment capital and sentiment on our economy to make us all feel that we are going to be back on track and growing again. Thank you very much.